Let's talk homeschool vision statements and goals today. Not necessarily those teeny tiny little daily or weekly goals that we set, but the bigger overarching visions and goals that we have for our homeschool and our children. Hi everyone, I'm Kylie, and on this channel we're all about all things home, school, family and fun. Let's get into it, shall we? To be honest, I didn't start my homeschool journey with an overarching homeschool vision statement. It actually took me quite some time before I decided to research something like that and understand the importance of having a big picture uh, overview of what I wanted from our homeschool. Now I completely understand the value and importance of having those big vision goals for our homeschool. And if you haven't done either of those, then I urge you to continue watching so I can share with you the importance and how simple it is for you to create your own homeschool vision statement. So what exactly is a homeschool vision statement? In a nutshell, it's simply the process of writing down your why. So you do need to take some time to work through this, but we write down our why of why we're homeschooling, where we think we're headed, and how we're going to get there. This vision statement will end up becoming the basis of how you run and organize your homeschool and how you plan to teach your children as well. And the key word here, being vision. It also helps to guide you on where you see each of your individual's children's educational journey progressing. You may have one child that already knows they want to go on and pursue further study or others who are ready just to jump straight out into the workforce. Having an overarching vision statement and in, in Involving all of your children in creating one of those vision statements will go a long way to understanding where your homeschool is headed. Every year we sit down and we take some time to reflect on the year that's been and we look towards the year that's coming ahead, making some goals and plans for that year. But if we don't have that long term view or that overarching vision that we have for our homeschool, how do we really know where we're going when we're just looking year to year? What are we looking for off there into the distant future? And this again is where having that vision statement really helps. Without a clear vision in front of us, we can fall into so many traps over the homeschooling journey because it is a long journey and we do need to be in this for the long haul. And a vision helps keep us focused. Some of the traps that are easy to fall into are questioning whether we're actually adequate enough to be doing what we're doing questioning curriculum choices that we're making and wondering about every new shiny object that comes across our path because I can bet you every year there's going to be some awesome new curriculum release that every single homeschooler jumps on. This is where a vision statement can help bring you back to yourself, to your core of what is at the center of your homeschool. And so by having clear answers to just a few simple questions, you will have your vision of where you're moving forward into the future. So some questions you may like to ask yourself are, why are we homeschooling? Why do we continue to homeschool? How do we want our children to view their education? What do we want our children to gain from being homeschooled? And where do we see our family and our children at the end of this homeschooling journey? What might that look like for us? By writing clear and concise answers to these questions and possibly a few others that you may like to come up with on your own, you'll have made a great start to your own homeschool vision statement. This will help guide you on your choice of curriculum, resources, social activities, and other things that come across your path on your journey. And of course, along with how you actually choose to educate your children on the day to day. Of course, a vision statement, I believe, is something that should be looked at annually. Are we still aligned with our current vision statement? Is this the path that we're all happy to be heading along? Is this where we're going? By revisiting these things every year, again, it brings us back and has us assess where we're at and where we believe we're headed. So a vision statement is not set in stone. It is absolutely a fluid piece of information to help you understand where your homeschool is at in the here and now. And really, as your children grow and mature, the vision statement should also grow and mature with you. So spending time envisioning what you want your family, your home and your homeschool to look like and to feel like will help you to plan appropriately to accommodate all of those goals and visions that you all have. Speaking of goals, should I set homeschool goals? In a short answer, absolutely yes. 
well, I believe so anyway, I believe that we all should have some level of goal setting for us. And setting homeschool goals can help keep you focused, not only you as the teacher and guide in your children's journey, but also for your children. And obviously goals for a young child are going to be very different than the goals that you may set together with your older children. But goals are a great way to bring in that vision into your homeschool and to keep it again at the center of where your focus should be. And of course, goals give you and your children something to work towards, something to celebrate when you've made that achievement. And if they're not necessary, definitely not necessary, but I feel that having goals to work towards can really enhance the day-to-day -day and the week-to-week -week of home educating. If you're finding this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. By doing so, we'll help the video get out to more people who may be looking for information like this. So just how do we prepare our homeschool vision statement? First and foremost, you're gonna to need to get yourself a pen and a notepad because we need to get some thoughts onto paper. I always like to start with why. Why are we homeschooling? Why do we choose to homeschool? What led us to homeschooling? Just jot down every single thought that you currently have about why you are homeschooling. Whatever comes to mind, jot it down. It doesn't matter. Just, it's a big brain dump. Every little thought you've got in your head, get it out, get it down on paper. Once you've worked through that statement or question, then move on to something else. What does education mean to you? Now, this is something that will probably change quite a lot as you progress in your homeschooling journey. But for now, today, pop down all of your thoughts of what education means to you. Here is where you can probably include things that you feel are really important for your children to have. The skills and the resources and the learning opportunities that you feel your children need to have on this journey. Another great thing is to jot down things that are not important to you in any way, shape or form. These will actually help you when those new shiny objects come across your path to help keep you focused. Or things that you know, no, this is not for us. We have our vision and we're sticking to that over here. So jot down both things that are important and things that you are happy to leave by the wayside. So once you've worked through those, then let's take a closer look at how we might see our day working. Now, of course, when we're right in the beginning of homeschooling, how we feel our day is going to work and how they actually turn out are most generally two very different things. But it still is a really good place to start to reflect on your feelings and how you want your homeschooling days to look and feel and progress. So this may mean that you're a highly structured, scheduled person who wants a timetable written down by times, or you may choose to just have a simple routine for each day. So whatever feels most comfortable for you, jot that down next on your trusty little notepad. And of course, as I said, this isn't set in stone. This is simply a starting point. It's simply a place to get us reflecting and thinking of what we want moving forward. Once you've answered some of those questions, you could potentially start looking at some individual goals. So don't forget to include some of those questions that I mentioned earlier. Of course, the why are we here? What do we want our children to gain from home educating? What do we want our children to think or look back on and reflect about during their home educating experience? How do we want them to feel about the choice that we made to educate our children at home? And what do we see happening at the end of this journey? And so as each year rolls around, my suggestion is that you grab out that trusty notepad again and you revisit some of those statement points. And along with that, you start making shorter yearly goals for your homeschool and for your children. And a great way to do this is invite each of your children individually on an afternoon tea date, just you and one other child. Head to your local cafe, grab a milkshake, a slice of cake, and just chat about where you're at, where you think you're going, any issues that may arrive. What did they love from last year? What did they not like from last year? What are things they may want to learn moving forward? What are some things that they definitely know they don't want to do? Get all of that out. This is a wonderful time to bond, create memories, and also come up with a great working plan and a vision for that individual child. Depending on the age of the child, this is also a perfect opportunity to start chatting about future. What does the child see in their future? What thoughts have they had about what they might think they may do once they've finished their education at home journey? 
the answers or the topics that come up out of these conversations can really help to guide the next couple of years of goals for that child in their home education journey. Why not create a few goals for yourself as well? This is a great way for you to have something to work on, to focus on, and it's a wonderful opportunity to model goal setting for your children. So once you've gathered all of that information and you may have pages and pages of notes you've written down, especially about your overarching vision, it's time to go through all those notes and pull out the most important pieces of them and bring them together in a few short sentences, possibly a paragraph or two, again, that's gonna be an individual choice, to come up with a succinct homeschool vision statement for your family. And of course, writing this may take days or weeks to actually get through it. And it's gonna take a bit of effort, 100%. It's not, for most of us, isn't going to be something that we can just jot down and be done with it and close our book and walk away. It needs some time to reflect, to discuss with your family and work out what your vision actually looks like. But I do strongly encourage you to take that time to discuss this with your family as a family group, as individual one-on-ones, and that way you can really nut out where everyone is at and what they hold dear, what's important to them, and where they see this journey of home educating going. By including the whole family, it keeps everyone together. It keeps you all on the same page and keeps you all well connected regarding their homeschool vision statement. And when you set goals together, it also keeps everyone accountable to uphold those goals. And so once you're at the stage where your vision statement is all written, your goals for the next year or two are all planned out, you may like to type all this up. I know some people hang their vision statement on their wall in a prominent place so that it's nice and easy to see. Everyone can look at it and read it as they go past as a nice gentle reminder. Or an alternative to that is if you have a binder where you keep plans and work and timetables and those types of things, you may like to keep your vision statement front and centre so that each time you go to your teacher binder, there it is where you can visit it and read it and work through it periodically. And as you start to write your homeschool vision statements, remember that this is in the here and the now. This is where we are today. That doesn't mean that the vision statement we write at the beginning of our education journey is going to be the same vision statement that we will write five or six years later. It is a working document, it should be fluid, and it probably should change with your family as you progress through the journey. But as I said, they are a great guiding point to help you just stay focused on that bigger picture of why you're chosen to home educate and where you see you got yourself going with it. Of course, my vision and goals for my family and my children have changed several times in the 14 years that we have been educating at home. As I came to understand more about education, how children in particular learn and how my children learn and what learning or education truly means to me. All those things have changed for me greatly from my early days of educating at home. And reflecting on our vision for this, again, guess keeps bringing us back to our why. Why are we doing this? Because in those moments where we're having times where we're not sure if this is what we want to keep doing, we're having a bad day, week, month, possibly even not a great year, and we're wondering what are we doing? Why did we choose this path? That's where the vision statement is such a great thing to have by your side because it really helps you refocus, it helps you bring back the why. Why are we here? And so this is a great document that I love to reflect on time and time again, and I hope that will also become a valuable piece of information for you and your family on this journey. And so once I'd spent time working through all the things I wish I'd known when I first started homeschooling, it made creating my vision statement much easier and simpler for me. In fact, I have a video covering some of the things that I wish I had known all those years ago. So you might want to click on over and watch that one as we finish off today's video. And thanks for joining me today. Until next time. Bye for now.